Hey everyone, welcome back to Someone's PC. It's been a while since I've done a video. We kind of had a DDoS attack on someone's PC.com, so I had to sit there and resolve that with my domain host and work on some other articles that I want to put out. But um, it's better late than uh, oh, crap. Better late than never to do a Philadelphia Regionals recap. Most people are going to be excited about the expanded format and the meta and how it's going to play going into San Jose and all the other stuff, especially people on the West Coast, because I don't think they have a standard format for a very long time. Um, standard format regional, that is. So, to start, how was the tournament overall? Pretty good. Kind of sucked. Too many repairings. Um, I'm sure you guys might have watched Rahul Reddy's video at the chaos gym and how bad they handled the beginning of each round and how awful it was so we're going to go in chronological order from the very beginning of how my tournament experience was um and splash a little bit of my feelings and my thoughts in the meta so let's start day one i know i'm playing yveltal and i'm debating whether or not i feel like playing a sableye i choose not to play a sableye because i don't see too many sableye garb around and I'm like, whatever, this deck is busted. Let me play two Maxis and two Glade and one Archaeops with the anticipation of seeing a lot of Raikou Eels, um, some Asago Rob decks, Mirror Matches, stuff like that, a lot of Manetric decks. Uh, I ended up seeing one Raikou Eel, no Manetric decks, one Mirror Match, and a whole lot of weird stuff. And my friends were playing like Toad Bats all day and other Toad decks, <clears throat> and that's why I purposely played a Kale deal with a Floatstone, and now I get to sing a single Toad deck. So, yeah, pretty weird tournament. Um, I'm not going to go into a round-by-round -round breakdown, because I think that crap's boring. Just know I played against two Night March decks. One of them didn't play Puzzle of Time, and the other one was Chris Shemansky, and he kicked my face in. Number two, I played against Whale Lord round one, and that was very, very fun. Um, sadly, I delinquented him like four times, and he just lost both games very, very quickly. I think I was standing up in like eight minutes. Um... He's, rel he's like a relatively new player to the game. I think he took a break for a little bit, but he just loves Whale Lord. And since it's an expanded format, he came to come play in the tournament. So it was cool to meet him. He had no idea who I was or anything about someone's PC, um, which is really, really sweet. Because sometimes when I sit against an opponent and they're like, oh, I love someone's PC and I love your channel, I feel like if I lose to them, they're going to lose all respect for me. And if they beat me, they get really, really excited because they beat a quote-unquote good player. Um, I don't think I'm that good. I'm just kind of entertaining. That's like people like me. And... Good for them, they won, but now I'm like, dang, now I lost, and it kind of sucks. So, nice to have not have those awkward moments at times. Round two, I played against Sam Chen. He was first seed after day one and first seed after day two using Raikou Eels. Um, so, good for him. But, I guess the rest of the time I could say the, the decks were fairly standard. So, we're going to talk about what happened at the regional and why Rahul went on such a big rant about the crap that um, occurred. So, to start, they were repairing almost every single round of the tournament because they messed up on scanning in the match slips and marking who won and who lost. This pushed back the tournament so much that I felt like we didn't even need a lunch break, yet they gave us one anyways. And by the time my match was done, right before lunch, I stood up. I felt like there was still 15, 20 minutes left in the round. Um, I could be wrong on that. And when I went outside, I was like, oh, we only have 20 minutes to eat. This is fun. Let's go to the venue and have some of their bad pretzels for $8. And then they had like $2 chips. So, <laughs> yeah, lunch was, lunch was non-existent. It was unnecessary and it was just just bad it was like a smack in the face of the players like crap um i didn't even want the pretzel after eating it someone walked by and they're like yo you want a slice of pizza and i just took theirs and as soon as we got back from lunch they said we're gonna start at 3 30 could have been 3 45 i'm trying to remember exactly i was pretty tired but um we didn't start till like four they said, all right, we're going to go ahead and start this time. And then everyone's everyone's back. Everyone's chilling in their seats. But they're still not starting the round for some reason because they're messing up. And players were getting really angry and moody. Um, 
I was kind of fine with it. I'm used to waiting a lot for tournaments nowadays, so I guess I'm not too too upset like everyone else is. But I can understand their frustrations. Um, next rounds play out. Blah 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 blah. Nothing too crazy happens. More pairings, more repairs, more repairs, and um, overall, I finished the tournament six and three. And I thought that was going to be super solid for me to finish in top 64. Boy, was I wrong. I got like 84th or 74th? I think I got 84th. Either way, I was top 128 instead of top 64 with the 18-point record with three losses. Ugh. It was tough times for the kid. It was really, really bad. But um, since we're just going to keep this strictly about the tournament and like the meta as a whole, I will say... When round 11 was finished, or round 9 was finished, or nearing finished, they started kicking people out of the venue. They were like, go outside and get in the doorway and stand like in the hall and wait for um, the standings and pairings to pop up. So people might think, oh, that's cool. That's fine, because I guess there's not many people like waiting inside. Wrong, because there's tons of people with friends, and friends want to go like with each other to their hotels when the tournament's over if people drop they want to sit around and play with their friends or have just have fun so once i won my round nine uh, match i walked to the front to give them my match slips and they're like no we're taking them outside and i was like why and he said mm -hmm. and i was like, all right cool so we <laughs> walk outside into a group of angry angry people like wow i've never seen this many upset Pokemon players in my life. Maybe because I wasn't at Arizona Regionals. But these people were just like, <laughs> they were in a bad mood, man. So I come over. I just went around. I'm pretty happy. Not because I won, just because, like, I don't know. I like I like the feeling of competing. And then when the tournament's over, I was like, woohoo, we can go, like, we can go out eat. We can go get food. We can go chill back to the hotel. I can, you know. Take my socks off. You know, that great feeling when you're that long day and you're like, ah, oh, and you re like release yourself, release the inner demons. So I was giddy. I was, I was hyped to go uh, turn on my slip. But when I walked outside, it was madness. Just people sh pushing, shoving, not knowing where to stand. There were judges out there with like clear stress on their face and so much confusion as to what was going on that when I handed them my slip, they kind of yelled at me and told me to go outside the rope. And I was like, "This is for you, lady. This is this was this was your thing, not mine. This is this is just me trying to get a win here." Um, so that was <laughs> that was hilarious to go through. And we waited outside for like another eight to ten minutes. Everyone around us is angry. Um, and yeah, the round finishes maybe fifteen minutes later. Everyone walks outside, turns to more lists, and you just see the confusion on all of the like players that play in round nine and all their faces. When they went outside to turn their slip, it just, it was so weird, it was so random, so frustrating, so unorganized, um, completely against what we want to see in tournaments, but, you know, here we are, playing for five grand, completely confused with what we're doing on, after round nine at 11.30 p.m. in Philadelphia, standing in the middle of the hallway. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> all right, they, uh, they were like, all right. Instead of posting your your standings, <laughs> we're going to announce the top 32 without a speaker or a, like without a without a loud phone or anything. No microphone, no speaker, nothing. They were just like, we're going to read this out. And I laugh and it sounds like I'm belittling them, but I, I try to put myself in their shoes. And I was like, I know they don't want to do this. <laughs> they don't want to sit here and announce names like this or... Have to go through all the stress because they, they know people are gonna talk over them or try to like start screaming because uh you know they made top thirty two and so they have to just, like quickly react. But crap, man, it was a funny situation. I was laughing at the time, but people are, I was, you know, everyone was upset. So I sit there and they're like going through the list. So like first place Sam Chen, second place Alex Fields, and they <laughs> they just they just like zoom through the list, and if one person spoke up to get hype for themselves or for their friends, you miss the next two people in line of the names. And um, that, oh, that that killed me. I felt like it ruined the experience because half half the like excitement from going to these regionals is screaming for your friends that make top cut or them screaming for you when you make top cut. 
it's a great feeling. And it really brings the like togetherness of the community um, to a to light, I guess. Whatever. When they announced Top 32 in Yu-Gi-Oh, unless it was your boy, you just didn't scream or clap for anyone, right? But in, in Top 32 for this, they're like, number one, Sam Chad, number two, Alex Fields, and they just kind of scroll down the list. And I think, I think they got to like, I'm pretty sure it was Ben Sock. I'm pretty sure I screamed for Ben Sock too. So as soon as they announced, they're like, Benjamin Sock, you heard, woo! And it, as soon as the woo started, like it was Ric Flair, People just started screaming, telling them to shut up. It was awesome. It was like, yeah, they're like, shut up, this does no, no talking, nah. And you felt like you were in grade school again when your teachers didn't know what to do during the tornado drill and you were all standing against the classroom doors like like this or like with your head on the ground. So <laughs> it was it was pretty entertaining, but uh, a little bit pathetic at the same time. So that was that was that was a watch. That was something to see. I was kind of frustrated. I was more frustrated that my friend Kevin Baxter got 33rd when he had a 20-point record. And holy crap, this was a big regional. Um, we got to do better. If, I was, if I'm probably not as weird and like happy as I am, I would have been mildly upset at how all that went down. So to see Rahul that frustrated and mad about the, like, events that occurred up to it I, I could totally understand where he's coming from um, I just don't feel the same way because I'm not I'm too too angry of a person <laughs> but man that was entertaining to see uh wow so they announced the names that way and I was like cool now they're gonna post the list so we can see like see ourselves all the way to the top 64 right wrong they're gonna announce all the way to the top 64 and they started announcing it and I'm thinking I'm six and three 18 points I'm good not by a long shot. 84th, man. Got body. Just backhanded in the face. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was sad. I wanted my packs. I wanted, I wanted a couple more points, and I wanted my packs, too. Like, what What if I finished the season with, like, 480-something points? And it was this. This X and 3 that made me miss uh, my world's invite. It'd be quite adorable. But, dang, man. It was awkward. It was weird. Not making top cuts sucked at 18 points. Like, not top cut, but top 64. Um, people I know with, like, 16 points are making top top 128. I was like, what? Was like, ah, frustration. So I was stuck with them. You know, people with other 16 points. So, pretty upsetting. Um, day two happens. I'm not in it. I'm sleeping. We had a good time. We had some Philly G sticks. It was fun. And they had a mildly steady day two i think i was pretty much updating everyone on verbank um the round for round pairings and all the matchups and stuff um i saw an interesting ruling with uh aaron tarbell where his opponent announced a different attack than what he actually wanted to attack with and the judges and the head judge ended up ruling in a way where they got to use the attack that they didn't announce and that was the first time I've ever seen that before ever in any competitive game I've ever played in my life in my life for like 12 years now in any card games. So yeah, I feel like if you announce an attack, you go by the verbiage, man, the verbals. I mean, I don't just sit there and be like, I want a Big Mac. And when they hand me Big Mac, I was like, whoa, I say double cheese, man. Get that out of my face. And <laughs> Uh, that must have been tough for Aaron to have to deal with. But um, all the logic and all the ruling was explained on this Furbank thread and in Rahul's um, YouTube post. I, I guess I'll give you guys a little uh, little play-by-play -play from when I have it. Um, Aaron's playing against an opponent. His opponent has a Yveltal EX with two Dark Energies, a Double Colorless Energy, and a Fighting Fury Belt. And he... Announces an attack against Aaron Shaman. Shaman has no uh, Finding Fear Belts or anything on it. He's just like, I'll Y Cyclone, and then he points down at the evil ball and then reaches for his prizes. And Aaron goes, you announced Y Cyclone. And he's like, I meant evil ball. And he's like, what? And then they call for a judge, start all the ruling all there from there, blah, blah, blah. And what, they're, um, what they ruled it as, 
Because the opponent never intended to move his energy, and he was reaching for prizes. He was going for a knockout on Shaman EX using Evil Ball. And so they gave him the Evil Ball. I don't disagree with it, right? <clears throat> I just never heard this ever before in my life. And I just wanted to see how they got to this mindset in this situation. Because me as a poker player, that just seems like the easiest way to bait somebody into like pushing in your chips. And then when you see a reaction, I'm like, just getting got him check or like fold or, you know, get him from there. Like, oh, it just seems a very gray area that I thought was originally in the light, you know. But I I thought announcing your attack was that's it, Finn. That's it. It's you announced it. GG. I don't care what you pointed at you. I don't care if you pointed at his eye. You know, game announced it. But Poke Pop does write the rules, and um, he knows a lot more than I do. So I just saw the rolling go down, and I was just kind of like, what? Okay. And um, I'm telling everyone, please point at your card as well as announce it if you want to use an attack. But crap, that was really weird to witness. Other than that, top, top, thir uh, top 32 was nothing too um, like crazy. It was really, really diverse. And I guess we can get to that part now. There's no other rulings that I want to talk about. But... The diversity in this format was absurd. Like, there there was no call of the weekend. There was no, I should have played that deck and I would have got there. <clears throat> you know, the one ring to rule them all. No, there's nothing. It was just, just a whole lot of everything. No Plasma Lugia, so tell, tell, if you see Chris at a tournament, laugh at him for it. Because... He deserves those losses and be playing that deck. Um, okay. So you're probably thinking, what's going to be an expanded in the future? How are people going to adapt? Um, and what should I do about it or what's deck to play? I'm going to write an article on this, but I'm still going to talk about it right now. You should be playing a consistent deck that you're comfortable with, and it's amongst the top two tiers of the format. Because there's about 9 or 10 decks, I think, that are very, very solid and that are um, strong enough to win a tournament. So, if you're playing a deck you're comfortable with, you know its matchups, and is relatively good in terms of the top two tier scales, then you should be definitely fine going into an event. The problem is, this format is so matchup-based that... You need, you need to be able to dodge the stuff you don't want to see and hit the stuff you do want to see. And when you go against the 50-50s, you have to be a good enough player to overcome the, the madness. Um, you also play quickly so that we don't tie and then end up losing out of the tournament that way. So, 50 minutes is not enough in a 2 out of 3 format. That's, that's honestly my best advice. Play a deck you're comfortable with. Play a deck you feel like you're going to win with and play a deck that is unfair like you need to look at your deck and be like this shouldn't be real i shouldn't be doing this to you like you know look at your opponent apologize that's the kind of deck you want to have um that's how i feel when i make an archaeops and i go against evolution deck they're like oh i can't evolve ever I'm like nah no <laughs> no you can play Eva soda or wally if you're a uh, if you're wall in that way i mean sam did in his deck so you're gonna see that in a little bit a couple days and um, definitely play these unfair decks. This is why it's expanded, because it, it doesn't make sense. We have like an 18,000 card pool that we have to pick from, and there's so many good decks that you just got to play one of them, and you'll, you'll be fine. Just run to your good matchups. It sounds very luck-based. Um, I would argue that it is. It sucks that we have to hit these matchups, but most of the players that made Day 2 were really good players. And they're they're a good player for a reason. They're consistent for a reason. And they made day two for a reason. And that's probably because um, they're comfortable with their deck and they're good with their deck. And they had like three or four good matchups when they needed to hit it. So, yeah. I'll talk about deck updates, whatever, what everything needs to play in the future. Um, 
There's there's no one deck to rule them all. There's more Nightmarch than there needed to be. People are just being childish. You know. Oh, I didn't think I'm gonna see Nightmarch. I guess how many times I've been carrying this tournament. That's what Peter <laughs> That's what Peter Kicker told me. He looked at me, he's like, Guess how many times you think I've been carrying? I was like, mm, I heard five, so like twelve? He's like, zero. I was like, Alright, no wonder you're winning. <laughs> no wonder you're in day two, dude. So Yeah. Uh, definitely play Karen in your deck if you if you have a bad Night March matchup. And if you think playing Karen in a deck that just naturally loses to Night March, like Rizzi and Genesect or Manet or Manetric is gonna save you, no, it's not. They're still gonna get there. You're still gonna lose. Oh, it's horrible. But you know, at least at least these broken decks with like stuff that can fit Toad, Yvelta or something. Eels. Yeah, you can play uh you can play Karen, you'll be fine. So I definitely need to start including Karen in the future. Other than that, just I guess wait for my article to come out. No, it's not premium, so you guys don't have to pay. So if you guys feel like I'm juicing you for money, I'm not. I just want I just want to give the community something good to go off of. Since people for some reason seem to enjoy my thoughts, um, it was a good tournament. It was fun. The way it was run was a little meh. I don't really blame judges for that. Not everyone can be prepared for 600 plus masters. Um, to be in a tournament. Orlando was. That's why they were killing it. Shout out to the Crecklers. Um, they're beast. And we didn't have a stream, man. Like, what? I would have streamed. I mean, I, I wanted to play. I would probably try to get someone else to do the commentary. But, yeah, I, w I still want I would want to stream. Because I need to look back. I need, I need VODs to study off of. It feels great to become a student of the game that I love so much. And study what was winning. Study what was losing. Study how people messed up and where we can improve or how we can discuss it from there. So, Hopefully we have a, we have a stream at Fort Wayne. I'm going to go to Fort Wayne. Um, I'm going to go to San Jose too just because I'm not going to London and I couldn't get off in time there for work. So I was like, whatever, I guess I'll get off for San Jose and use my, um, my airline points to fly there and play in their expanded tournament. <sighs> Fun times. Um, yeah, play a good deck, play a consistent deck, play a top tier. Exactly what it is doesn't matter. You have to run into what you want to run into, and you need to be comfortable. Get the practice in. Know how to do. Know how to beat X when you're like playing Y, and and study your fifty fifties. Grind out your fifty fifties. See if you can swing in a ways that we haven't seen before. Little things like that. Hopefully TOs learned their lesson. This repairing crap is so annoying. Uh, I've seen a lot of recommendations online. I saw people say we should have one game 30 minute round ones or day ones. Um, and then day two can turn into a two out of three format. Um, I, I don't necessarily hate that as long as we play more rounds day one. That way it evens out all the times we're going to draw like crap or get turn one gets us. So we need change. We definitely need change of repairing. I am nowhere near upset about it as everyone else is, so that's why you're not seeing me like partying too much on the post. I didn't think it was that bad, but I think I just I'm just weird and I have a lot of patience. Um, yeah, good times. Love you guys. If you said uh, if you said what's up to me at um, in Philly or like notice how short I was, I got called short like 19 times this weekend. It was getting ridiculous, but I am short, so it wasn't that bad. But still, like you know, people that were fans were like, "Wow, you really are short. I'm taller than you. I'm a senior." I was like, "Shut up, dude. I know it." Must be nice. But uh, shout out to all the love and everyone that said thank you for our content, for so much PC, for our elite PC. Um, I had like multiple people come up to me, tell me that they're subs to the site and that it really, really helped them. It means a lot, man. Um, just because I put a lot of effort and time into these articles. Dylan does too. Like we, we push between 20 and like 40 hours per elite PC article. And it's just, it's a lot of testing, it's a lot of thinking, it's a lot of revamping, a lot of editing that goes into what we want to say. So, um, it's well worth it to see people come up and say thank you for this or all your time and all that stuff. Um, it's also worth it to see the quality of our articles surpass those of others that are charging for their articles at double our price. So, that's kind of fun to see. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll be back to you with a bunch of content. 
Um, I'm still trying to get like my streaming going and a lot more VODs, so that'll be coming to you guys soon. Thanks for logging to someone's PC, and take it easy.